Hello and welcome to Sibia Medical Center's YouTube channel. I am pulmonologist Dr. Kirat Sibia and I am going to be talking about some evidence-based practices based on the best available medical knowledge. Because there's a lot of misinformation that's floating around regarding COVID and it's essential that to deal with this pandemic, we have the best practices available and awareness about this is essential in public. First of all, what are the symptoms of COVID and how do you react to it when you get to know that you could possibly be dealing with COVID, you could be having COVID or somebody in your family could be having COVID. If somebody shows these symptoms, what should be done? The symptoms commonly seen in COVID are fever. It could be low grade fever. It could be high grade fever. Cough. It could be with expectoration, as in with sputum production, or it could be without sputum production. Generally, there is dry cough. In the newer strains that we are seeing, there is there are also people coming with throat irritation and with nasal congestion, nasal blockage. And early in the disease, very few people complain of breathlessness. So that is not an early symptom. But yes, it's a symptom that comes as the disease progresses in certain cases, which it have, which have a progressive disease. So if anybody in your family or if you yourself get any of these symptoms, then what should be your reaction to that and what you should be doing about it? First of all, you should be self-isolating or the person in your family who has COVID symptoms should be self-isolating, which means that they should be moved into a room, single room facility with an attached toilet. Nobody else should be entering that room. The person should not be going out in the common areas of the house, should not be going to the kitchen or going to the dining table to fetch water or fetch anything. You should keep a stool outside the room on which the patient, the person has a fixed set of utensils. You go, you put out the food on that, on those utensils and the patient takes them in. When you put out the food, the door of the patient's room is closed and you and the person who's give, putting out the food or the food material or water or anything that the person needs steps away when the person opens the room. So these are some basic protocols, but these need to be followed very strictly. The person who is infected should be wearing a mask, even if he's alone in the room, because you don't want to create aerosols and you don't want to leave a high viral load are all around in the atmosphere. Most of our houses, the ventilation is interconnected. It is not that the person is in that room and the ventilation when he's turning on the fan, it is a positive pressure that is generated. The air in that room is going to move out to the surrounding rooms. So we need to be wary of this and the person needs to wear a mask when he's in his own room, even if he is alone. As for the rest of the family, they should be wearing masks for their own protection. And the rest of the family should be on the watch out to see if they develop any symptoms. You should immediately get in touch with a doctor who foresees and who's overseeing all your treatment and supervising you and is there with you, observing you and monitoring you on the phone throughout these symptoms and as the disease progresses. So in case it progresses or worsens, then somebody who's been dealing with you can help you better. 